Hey, what's going on everybody? Well, we're back for another video today. And if you happen to be new to the channel, welcome. And we are grateful that you're here. My name is Chris and this is the Christopher Scott channel. And we like to keep fish, do crazy aquascapes, all kinds of things like that. And for everybody else that's back again, thank you so much for joining us once again. What we're gonna be focused on today is this setup right here that you can see on the screen. We put this together for a bunch of gold claw fiddler crabs. We were gonna attempt to breed them, which was an absolute disaster because well honestly breeding fiddler crabs in captivity is almost impossible so we have not been successful at breeding them but what we do want to do is we want them to be able to thrive so today we're gonna to be upgrading this enclosure to a much larger bin that is a little nicer for them with that I mean let's just get into this build today what we're gonna start with is this Sterilite plastic bin and you can get these at Walmart this one was about $15 this particular one hold 130 quarts, which is like uh, almost 40 gallons, basically. We're not gonna have nearly that much water in there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna stylize this after our vampire crab bin because, well, that bin was fantastic. And uh, I think these crabs will actually thrive in here. And if you have not seen that video, you can see that bin set up on the screen right here. So we're gonna basically build the same thing here. And we're gonna start on one side with a terrestrial area. And to accomplish that, what we're gonna use is just some sandstone. And I'm gonna start by just laying the sandstone down here in the bottom. And what we want is to try to keep this as level as possible, just adding this sandstone in here. And by doing this, what this will allow us to do is to build up a nice little terrestrial area that we can then backfill with some stone and some soil and things like that. So now that we have our kind of border set up, what we wanna do now is go ahead and backfill this side over here with some stone to make somewhat of a, I guess you call it a drainage layer. But before we do that, we wanna move this tub to where it's gonna go because this thing is gonna get really heavy really quick. So for this drainage area, I'm gonna use some of this rock. What we want is just basically for this rock to rise up to the bottom portion of this terrestrial area right here. We want water to be able to drain into it when we water the plants that are gonna be in this terrestrial area. So what I wanna use is some of this weed barrier. You can get this stuff at Home Depot, Walmart. I mean, you can pretty much get it anywhere. And this stuff makes a great barrier between a soil substrate and a rock substrate to create that drainage layer. So I'm just gonna cut this down to size. And you want a little bit of overhang, just simply because you don't want all of this stuff that is going to be in this terrestrial area falling over into your water or aquatic area. Oh, just like this. Now this will provide our barrier for our soil that's gonna go in here. Now for soil, what we're gonna be using is a organic non-nutrient soil, which is a mixture of coconut fiber, sphagnum moss, a little bit of perlite, and that's really it. I use this material or this particular soil in growing microgreens as well as in all of my terrariums. You just wanna get a nice thick layer here and we wanna fill it all the way up to this level here of the block for this terrestrial level. Now that the soil is in there, now it's time to go ahead and start planting. I'm gonna plant a couple of different types of plants in here. The first one being a pink vein plant. And what we're gonna do is just find us a nice spot back here in the corner where this thing can go right down into the substrate. Push it down in there really well. The next plant here is going to be a some sort of an ivy. I don't remember what this is. If you guys happen to know what this is, make sure you comment below and let me know what this is. Put this stuff down in here as well. So now that we have the dirt in here, one of the things that fiddler crabs are gonna like to do is burrow themselves into a sand substrate straight. So we're going to top some of it off with some mulch and then some of it off with some sand. So what I want to do with this liner is I want to come back and trim it up just a little bit. Not a crazy amount. We just want it low enough where we can hide the edges underneath our decorative topping or capping material, which in this case, like I said, is going to be either sand or mulch. It's like that. We're going to come back with some of this mulch and just start putting this in right over top of our weed barrier here in the back just to kind of lay it down a little bit. Now for our sand substrate, what I'm gonna be using is some pool filter sand. We're actually gonna put this in the bottom as well. So 
So the sand will do a couple of things up at the top. It'll give them a place to burrow because this will constantly be moist up here. They can burrow in the sand down here. They can climb up into the terrestrial area and have a dry place to be. Now all we gotta do is get some water in here. But while this is filling up, we're also gonna go ahead and add our filtration in here, which is going to be just this internal filter. And these things are super cheap. They're like maybe $10 at PetSmart. And this thing will do perfect for filtering this water for these crabs. All right, so now that we have our fresh water and our salt water in here, what I wanna do now is go ahead and dechlorinate. The salt water was already dechlorinated. I just bought that. I have checked it to make sure that the salinity is good on this water. So we're gonna go ahead and kick off this filter and we're gonna dechlorinate this water. So the fresh water that's in here does not kill the beneficial bacteria that we're about to add. Now with this, one of the other things I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and add a stone at the bottom here for this water to hit so it does not disturb the sand at the bottom, which will kind of block that water off. So now everything is full. We wanna go ahead and add some of our favorite API product, which is the API Aqua Essential, and this will dechlorinate this water perfectly for us. Now what we'll do is we'll let this water go ahead and cycle through this setup for a little bit and let the water fully get dechlorinated and then we'll go ahead and add some beneficial bacteria to this as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the back of the filter, add some to the water column as well. And that will instantly cycle the water for the addition of fish. However, you should definitely let the water cycle on its own naturally for a little while. So now that the water is dechlorinated, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add some sand from the other container, which is full of beneficial bacteria on its own, which will allow this water to be cycled pretty much immediately, allowing for the instant addition of these crabs. All right, guys. Well, I went ahead and gathered up all the crabs from the other bin and let's get these guys in here. All right. Well, now that we have these crabs in here, this is dechlorinated water, and I just want to get all of this area back here nice and wet, just so these plants have plenty of moisture to survive. And as you can see, these crabs are loving their little enclosure. I think they like it much better than outside. I did have to replace some of these crabs since the last time I did this bin setup for these fiddler crabs, and that is because, well, I live near the lake, and a couple of things happen. Number one is, as I caught on my camera, a raccoon coming up and opening the lid on the bin enclosure because it does reside outside and eating crabs, which was terrible. So then I locked the enclosure. Well, during the day, I would take the top off the enclosure just so they could get sunlight and things like that. And the raccoons aren't out during the day. And I caught on camera a crow coming over and standing on the side of the bucket and eating the crabs. So you'll see quite a few babies in here and those were not from, you know, being successful at breeding fiddler crabs because like I said, it's near impossible in captivity to breed these guys. But it was just simply because of, well, the circle of life and stupid raccoons and crows. But we have about 20 fiddler crabs in here at the current. And yeah, these things are super cool. If you've never kept fiddler crabs, they're fairly inexpensive. They're easy to keep. They don't have a whole lot of crazy care requirements. And you can do a simple setup like this. I mean, all in all, this setup right here, you're talking about $3 each for the plants. You're talking about maybe $3 worth of sand, maybe $5 worth of stone. And so $11, $10 for this, so you're 21 plus $10 for the bin, you're at $31 plus the cost of the crab. So it's, it's really not an expensive thing to do. And these guys will live life in here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and feed these guys. And what I feed them is a couple of things. I do have crab specific diet, but I also feed 
API bottom feeder feed and that is because this stuff is really high in crude protein which is good for these guys and this stuff sinks pretty well so I'll put this in the water like this and then I'll sprinkle some up here on the shore area. They are in fact scavengers so they will sift through the sand and eat rotting material and dead material. They're also cannibalistic so they will eat each other as well. So if one of them die then they will in fact eat it. And if you notice here they were obviously hungry because they are chomping down on this stuff already. All of them are. So everything in here is looking fantastic. I mean these guys are acclimated already. They're eating well. Everything looks good in here. So you're gonna have to let me know for anybody that's new to the channel that maybe came here from the original Fiddler Crab breeding video you're gonna have to let me know what you think about this new enclosure. I think it's fantastic. I built one almost identical to this for what I thought was vampire crabs, but unfortunately they weren't. I had to build a brand new enclosure for these Halloween moon crabs because they were in fact not vampire crabs. And you can actually see that enclosure right here on the screen. And if you wanna go back and watch that video, you can do that with a card that you'll find above. So with that, these guys look fantastic. And hopefully you guys enjoy this new enclosure as much as our little crabs do. So like I said, there's about 20 crabs in here. Make sure you go ahead and comment below. And what should we name all these? Before we get out of here though, I want to take a look at this Buddha Jungle Aquarium that I put out in my last video. If you have not seen that, make sure you go back and check this video out. I love this aquarium, it looks fantastic. If you look right there, we have the male Epistogramma cockatoide who is out. You have a little pygmy Cory that is right there. And the female is back up in here. I always see her coming and going right back up in there. So I am assuming that that is where she is spending most of her time. They are actually cave breeders, which means that she's probably in there preparing a nest for eggs because we did in fact successfully breed these guys. There are a few babies in here. I haven't seen them today, but we will see those guys out and about within this tank often. So if you, like I said, if you have not checked out this video where we put this tank together, make sure you go back and watch that as well. And along with all of our other enclosure builds, in fact, there is the female right there. There's the male with her and yeah but we wanted to give them a new home and so we rescaped their tank and put them in here and they seem to really enjoy it they found you know where they like to be and we don't have any other fish in here with them other than a couple of pygmy cory and then of course the epistogramma cockatoidy fry which actually if you look right there focus 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 right there there's one of the fry right there. But they're doing fantastic. Everything looks fantastic in this tank, so make sure you go back and check this thing out. All right, guys. Well, I've been talking to you guys for a while now, unless you're new and you haven't seen this, about the csbrand.com. The csbrand.com is our website, and that it will be launching in the next few days, so this will be your last opportunity for a chance to win a piece of Christopher Scott merch, such as this Arowana shirt that I have on today. And on our website, we're going to not only be offering our merch, but also plants. So if you're in need of quality live plants at a lower cost, make sure you check us out. But if you want a chance to win a piece of Christopher Scott merch, all you have to do is visit the csbrand.com, put your email address in the middle of the screen. I'm not to sell your information or spam you. I'm literally just going to pick one random person that signs up with their email address and I'm going to send you instructions on how to claim a free piece of merchandise. As well as I will email you once the site launches and maybe once in a while when new products are released, things like that, you can unsubscribe at any time. But we're going to be bringing you plants like maybe some golden nasea. This golden nasea is a fantastic plant. This stuff is actually not overly hard to keep, but it's got a nice pink stem on it with a really bright green leaf. And it looks really, really good in a tank. I've got many tanks in the fish room that has this stuff growing in it. So a really, really good plant. So this has about six stems in it and you're gonna be absolutely dumbfounded at what I offer this for on the website. So make sure you stay tuned when this stuff launches. Or maybe an Anubius Cafafolia. But you'll be able to buy all kinds of plants from the website. Things like Bacopa, Anubius Nanas, Kleiner Bar Swords, Amazon Swords, Java Fern, floating plants like Duckweed, and frog bit all kinds of plants so make sure you put your email address in so you do not miss the launch of the website and all of the plant deals that we will have going on so 
with that guys hopefully you went on to enjoy this video hopefully you enjoy this new crab enclosure that has made a permanent residence here in the fish room on the christopher scott channel and with all of that guys make sure you subscribe make sure you turn on your notification bell as well as follow us on instagram and facebook links to all are in the description below and with that we are truly grateful for each and every one of you thank you very very much and we will see you next time